There we go. And I've just admitted Mount Nelson as a. All right. Uh, welcome to the Community Service Advisory Board uh, Committee meeting, Thursday, September 21st, PM at the Hub. We'll do some introductions. I'm Mark Dillon, current chair. All right. Uh, Amanda Doherty, first alternate, second alternate. I'm an alternate. Oh, you're moving up. <laughs> I, I feel like yeah. that's happening. Ellen Coughlin Quinn. I'm Rick Murphy. Uh, Karen Shoup, Town Council Liaison. <laughs> Molly Loader, Recording Secretary. Roger Shabak, Todd Sue, the Director of Community Services. Very good. Well, thanks for all being here. I hope everyone had a brief but nice summer. Now, what order we've done that? Penance, you have that, Emily. Yep. Alex is scheduled to be here. He's hoping. He's got two things here. going on yeah. uh, park opening and then a practice he's got to switch from. So he's hoping to be here by the end. Yes. And fifth will be around 6 30. All right. Excellent. Okay. So we're down to item three, uh, July 26th. Uh, 2023, uh, the meeting was canceled, so there's no minutes there. Uh, we do have May 18th, so to approve from that was the last one. Mm -hmm. Right. What's the difference between these two agendas? Why am I? So I printed both. I had sent one out, uh, and then Emily and I, I think we clicked send at the same time. Uh, I didn't. <laughs> uh, and so uh, I printed both just so, because one's you. online and just that way. If anybody ever questions, they're both up there and you don't get any sort of what they cover the same things and just different formatting, but I didn't want anybody to say, hey, you changed the agenda on these. So I provided both. So thank you. For your choose, whichever one he goes off of, but I just wanted you to have both copies in front of me. I'm okay. going by the one that's in front of me. <laughs> I'm not sure which one that is. I think it's tar. <laughs> uh, but Emily's does have May 18th minutes as need to be approved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So is Everyone had, has had, everyone had a chance to look at that. Mm -hmm. Take a motion for approval. One second. Motion. Thank you, Emily. Second. Roger, second. Any discussion? Amanda can vote tonight, right? That's what I was going to ask. Yes. Actually. She can. Yeah. Watch out. <laughs> All the power in the world. Changing things. Good point. Thank you. Sorry about that. Oh, you're fine. All right. Um, so all in favor? Aye. It's unanimous. Thank you. All right. Item four, citizens' comments. Open the floor. We have none present, but Allison, if you have anything to say at this moment, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to. I don't see her hand up and she's okay. still muted. So, okay. all right. Well, um, if she, at any, yeah, but she pops up in a second. I'll let yeah, you know. So, yeah, we'll close it for the time being then. All right. Uh, item five Heard Park Project Community Forum. Sure. So I just wanted to give a quick update. And again, one of your goals. Oops, sorry. No comment. She said thank you. I know. <laughs> Thanks, Allison. Um, so uh and um and Rick was there as well. So um just a couple, you know, quick feedback on that event. Um I got a bunch of questions why we were doing it with no funding source. And so I explained to the group that day. Um it's been, you know, it was paused during um it was paused to do the master plan. The master plan's been finished. And so I wanted to get the conversation back going about her park project. Mm -hmm. um, briefly explain to them that, you know, there's no funding for it. It's part of the discussion. And council has been really good about um, planning. And so, you know, just to bring an idea to some of them, you know, it doesn't, doesn't work anymore. So trying to, you know, kind of go through the diagram, figure out what's going on. Uh, didn't show the old diagram because things have changed since that time. So kind of validated the priorities. Um, long story short is it was two hours long. 
we spent probably an hour and a half talking about issues that were outside our purview. And I'll let Rick kind of chime in there too. I explained to them that I would share those with the officials that it mattered. A lot of it falls back to council just for funding of projects. Uh, it's complicated because some of the things they talked about were state driven, whether they were the dredging project, whether it was state paving. So I think there just needs to be a little more education in that realm is kind of how things go. Um, the big thing that came away from that meeting is they are forming a Pine Point Alliance to be able to have a singular voice rather than 50 different people talking. And so their first meeting is Tuesday of next week. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and I did ask the question and it kind of came across a little weird. And it wasn't me being sassy, but there's about <laughs> 60 people, 55 people in the room. It's it busy. And I finally, after about an hour and a half, so I'm listening to, you know, sidewalks, drainage, rotary, uh, East Grand, uh, co-op. Um, buses, like everything that was outside of our issue. Uh, and I took it all down and I've, and I've shared it with those folks. Uh, I finally asked and said, okay, this is really, my preview is really about Herd Park. And I said, just for reference, how many people in this room park at Herd Park to go to Pine Point Beach? And two people out of the whole audience did. And I said, so with all due respect, I need you to, we kind of, we changed the kind of focus of the meeting at that moment. I said, I need you to think about how I can make this project better. I said, I'm not trying to insult anybody, but I can do this by myself. I am asking for input. I want your input. So if you want to tell me what the concerns you have or designs or feedback, I said, but I can do this internally, but I'm asking for it. And so after that, we got some good feedback of some of their concerns. Um, and then it turned right back into, uh, and, and again, I can, I, I get it. It's certain things have transpired over time. And so I think them getting organized being able to follow through, being able to get one or two people information to get the right information to bring it back to the association or alliance, whatever they call them. That's what Pine Point does. I mean, that's what uh, Higgins does. That's what Prout's Neck does. That's what every neighborhood that has it does. And so they just have it. So uh, I think there's some things that can, they also recommended at some point, um, but they need to unify first about getting everybody in the room to have a discussion. I said, I'm happy to go to a meeting but I want directives. I want to know what we're talking about so I can bring you answers or it's just you telling me what we haven't done again. So I think Tuesday they'll start that work. Um, you know, I've got the the kind of summary of the stuff. It's really no different than four years ago. Um, I appreciate Rick coming and listening and then speaking and identifying himself as a an advisory board member. So I don't know, Rick, if you have any other. No, no. Like you said, there was a lot of stuff that was worth hearing but it was a little bit out of our area mm -hmm. so other than pass the information along to people that might be in a position to do something there wasn't really much we could we could talk about there but the genuine concerns it's just some of them weren't a lot of them were out of our area yeah mm -hmm. so councillor hamill lives down there and i live close by on Pine Point Road. so i'm going to try to go to the meeting next tuesday i think it would be and help them at least try to Doodle down, try to identify some big issues and try to reiterate, come here, log in here, like show up to a meeting, tell us what's going on. And yeah. I think Don Hamill and, you know, I'll reiterate, like you need to be organized or you're just going to have. Yeah. And Don was there and he stepped yeah, up and Don's answered awesome. a couple of questions. Yeah. And, um, but again, a lot of the issues were, um, and I think educating them where I said, I would listen, but when you talk about this or that, that might be PD or that might be engineering or that might be public worth that might be the state so everybody's got there's not one thing in the beach area at any of the beaches that is singularly managed there's so many different players and right down was there. beach access brought up at all because i know there's a lot of issues going on with beach access and avenue two and yeah. i didn't know if that was brought up in, in a way it wasn't it wasn't somebody said hey i want to talk about beach access but it came up in the context of the natural conflict between front row property owners and the second row and how the second row gets to the front row yep. without being too disruptive. So it definitely was about access. Just nobody said, hey, I want to talk about access. Right. It was there. It was it was on it was underlined. Mm -hmm. And it, and it's a big issue. And what meeting yeah. are you next week is the Pine Point like association. Yes, Alliance. 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 Okay. That's the meeting. Yeah. You're, they're calling they're it Pine, Pine Point Community Meeting, which is at the Engine 4 station, yeah. the Pine yeah. Point yeah. one. It's at six. I, I was at that meeting also. Yes, that's yes, right. Sorry. Uh, and, and they also were uh, some comments on the road leading to the first 
that you can't you can't stop it you can't put it one way it's got to go both ways and i mean that's yeah. another issue that we need to talk about I yeah there were, yeah what roger's kind of alluding to there was kind of two sub things where some of the residents didn't want like they wanted no cars down their road so they wanted signs that say mm -hmm. no access and like yeah. and then you know we were talking about where right. we're moving the bus trolley stop to get it back to the four way so that they have more choices right now they come into avenue five and then drive through pillsbury every single time mm -hmm. and so you know, we said we can't tell the public where they can't go. We can give them better directions to get where they think they need to go, but we can't say you can't go there. Um, and then access was uh, a big one was around transport, like walking and sidewalks. And I gave them the example. I said because this this came up three years ago was okay. I'm going to divide this room into thirds. The left side of the room wants sidewalks right down King Street. Now I'm telling you, it's going on the right side of the road. And I'm taking a 10 feet frontage of your lawn. And they're like, we don't want that. And the middle third is the community that's coming in and walking by there that's either renting, visiting, or I said, so it's this is a no win. And so it's not as easy to say put a sidewalk in. You know, so those are the things that we kind of got to educate along the way and some of those choices I just don't want. But which side of the road is going to give up 10 feet of lawn frontage to put a sidewalk in? What is in scope of the herd project, herd park project? Is so it? the herd park project started with simply bathroom renovation. That's the right bathhouse okay. is outdated and costing us so, tens of thousands of dollars a year, opening, maintaining, fixing, you know, plumbing, electrical. And so, but when we had those meetings, then it turned into, it was traffic volume. It was uh, pedestrian safety walking. Mm -hmm. It was resident access. It was um, safety within the parking lot. Um, so we gave them some designs and then we had a couple more meetings, got more feedback and went back. And then it to get with everything everybody wanted, it was a reduction of like about 35 spots down there. And so then that caused, because when you say the word access, we think of it as people pulling in the parking lot. What the meeting that I've gone to down there, it's about access for people to live there, not the people coming in. And so it's, I think we got to like define our definition better of what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, well, it's two different groups, too. Well, and again, and then there's a third group of people that live in town that just want to go to the beach. Right. And so we can mm -hmm. kind of get deeper into that when we get into the, the summer stuff. But yeah, so I mean, it's been a good meeting. And I think a lot of it is, but it's high level stuff. It's not, you know, they're not talking about dogs on the beach. They're talking about how, how it is when somebody walks by my house or people that I can't get out of my driveway because his car's, you know, backed up 75 deep. So, um, so anyways, they, they've been good meetings. Everybody's been super respectful and and um, and consistent with the comments. So I think it's there's a lot there to unpack. So awesome, thanks. Okay. <laughs> Six. Do you that, no, no. Just a mile. Community center ad hoc committee update. Aaron. Sure. Todd's gonna help me with this. <laughs> yeah, and I'll I think I've been through so many time. meetings. Yeah. Um, I mean, why don't you go over, if you want, how the meeting format went and everything? Yeah, so we're just getting, it's total infancy. Um, appointments committee um, did the charge. Amanda and, and Alex are two representatives. Um, I worked with UTL for two meetings to kind of get their schedule put in place uh, based on the existing charge. Alex said to get the work back early spring and potential November ballot. Um, so that's how we will set up. Um, we had our first meeting. We elected Patrick O'Reilly as chair and Amelia Kurtz, Dow Kurtz, I'm not sure which one, Dow, Dow, Dow. Um, as our vice chair, both previous ad hoc committee members from 2019. Mm -hmm. um, we decided to pause the recording clerk position because we had four people, I think, that weren't there. Amanda. Amanda. Well, no, I'm just kidding. no, no. Yeah. Uh, conflicts. Everybody come. Point you. They didn't appoint you. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what those happen. Yeah. I've done it to people, so yeah, I understand. Exactly. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, I, I I took the notes and sent the meetings out, and then hopefully we'll get mm -hmm. somebody else to kind of help with that. Um, and uh, we had a brief presentation from UTL, the, the firm we hired. Uh, they gave the group some homework, and it was more about a couple items. And Karen chimed in was. Uh, refreshing or being up to date because some people were on the committee and some were just joining the information of past work 
Um, we took a few minutes to talk about the difference in this project versus the previous charge of the 19 committee, because that was a downs edge driven. This is our offer. This is the spot. Here's what we're going to do. Can you do this? And then that committee, um, they did some high level work, um, did if we had a standalone building. So, um, but it was a different, different component. So we talked about how this group, UTL, will give us assignments and then we'll be able to um, kind of make sure it's meeting the scope of work and then how do we vet it? Um, and we still need to shake out a little bit with UTL, the roles and kind of how those two groups interact. So, um, and then the, one of the other piece of homework they gave was to make sure people know that the process is going and reach out to your neighbors and friends and say, hey, the meetings are open there. This one wasn't, it was taped and recorded so you can watch it, but the next ones will all be public interaction. Um, because I'm just, there's a lot of stuff going on on YouTube right now and I can't, I couldn't do three things at once. And so now <laughs> we have a chair and they can run the meeting. I can just worry about someone not screaming or yelling on YouTube and be able to turn them off and, and kind of go through that. That's right. We've been having some YouTube issues. Can, if you haven't heard, municipal yeah. governments, people have been getting in, raising their hand to speak and screaming derogatories. Oh, and no. it's, it's, been, it's been a challenge. So <laughs> I, that's why we're, I did, you know, more letting people in <laughs> know and you have to ask them a question like, hey, what's your address? Kind of just a vet. Yeah. Yeah. Sketchy stuff. But anyways, so. People have too much time on their hands. Yeah. yeah. Right. So, so anyways, good initial meeting, um, you know, and then, um, so, you know, talk to your friends, tell people about the process, educate, educate, educate. And then um, a homework assignment that I took on and that I'll get back to, to the, the board tomorrow, it's almost done, is taking the three surveys and just where it says pools number one, lap pool, rec pool, you know, uh, gymnasium, but you know, kind of how the, the survey residents rank that stuff, putting it in a side-by-side -side comparison. Well, the last piece of homework was to um, give UTL kind of the prioritization of programming. And so one of the things we educated the committee on, as well as my staff earlier in the day is, when they're talking about a building and they're saying a program, they're talking about spaces. We say program, it's like going to Tai Chi or going to soccer or going to, so when they say program, they're talking spaces, gym, pool, walking track. And so when they say activities, so like their homework was, we need to know what your program is so we can start designing that. And then you need to be thinking about what activities you want in those programs, because then that's going to decide how big, how many, you know, what, what things we don't have do. Um, and then, their goal through part of their process is show us a rough design, put some expenses to it, and then tell you how much it's going to cost to operate it. And then the last piece will be how much potential revenue you can make to bring it full circle. And then the ad hoc committee's ultimate role at the end will be help facilitate all the community meetings that need to happen and educate what's going on, and then help make some of those design fiscal decisions where you know you got an eight lane pool or a six lane pool is less to build and more cost effective to operate, but it doesn't meet the needs of the community. And so that, how do you, you know, do those? Um, it did come up at, and Karen can chime in, you know, risk concerns is an expedited process. Are we moving too fast? Is the time frame too short to deliver the product that's expected in this political climate? So I think that'll be an ongoing discussion. Yeah. I mean, that's, I, the timeline that the consultant proposed is very aggressive and they, they, they said it is aggressive. Um, I think there's general concern also that maybe we're, we're competing with the school. Um, it's it's not, when you said November, you don't mean the, this November. No, oh, so okay. yeah, 2024. Yeah. Um, and I, th I think we'll have a lot more direction uh, once we know about the school. Um, but it, you know, it's also yeah, we're, we want to meet right. twice a month, which yeah. I guess is a lot. But I think as Todd has said, you know, we have all this fresh data that we want to kind of push forward and we already have it. Um, so there is a lot in getting a lot of feedback about the fact that I were doing this now. Um, I think it's a, I think we should obviously do this and push it forward. I think we're going to have a committee that's going to work really hard. And I think um, it'll be helpful for this committee to bounce off ideas sometimes. Yeah. And also I think one of my my concerns is just watching the school. We're not the school, but we're definitely gonna need help come the spring and the summer once we actually have a package that we want to sell because this is a sale. You know, we really want to tell people what this is and why we need it. 
And I would imagine that we'll circle this board back in when that comes on and hopefully people would want to help a little bit. Yeah, how many and people are on the Sorry. How many people are on that on the there yeah. is there's three representatives and there's one vacancy from the previous committee. Right. There's two people from this committee, so that's seven. There mm -hmm. and there is three at large or four. Yeah. Four at large. Yeah. Four at large. And then there's non-voting members from the library and the school board. So, because again, pro competing projects and common themes can, how do we share, not duplicate? And then it's um, Jean Marie Katerina awesome. and Karen as the liaisons from the council and then myself and then any other um, town staff that we need. So, um, yeah, so I think that it is a lot. I think we'll kind of have a different conversation on Monday. Um, and then who knows, come November, the whole thing may be different. What is the feedback you're receiving? That Timing? You mean with the school? No, it's, yeah, 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 because I mean, we have a very expensive school coming on the ballot. I feel like it's a little controversial. I say little lightly. Um, and that if it doesn't pass, then, I mean, I will say, I said to Todd today, like, I, I don't even know what the school's plan B is. And I think that unnerves me a little because we're now, what, if they fail, we're competing with, we don't even know. That can't stop us, is how I feel. I mean, the, the public spoke. They want a community center. I'm, I'm disappointed that maybe this is the timeline we're on, considering the school situation, but I don't, we're not the school and people want a community center. It's the timing, cost, you know, you're asking for 160 million for the school, and then you want how much for a community center. And I think we all know pools are expensive and that's what everyone wants. Um, but there's a lot of value in the current surveys and data that we have. And like, we just can't lose that, I feel yeah. like. And no, we no. also, like, there's not gonna be any more land. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, that's what and our that's, conversations we yeah. had today is around, you know, the land is a big challenge, and a lot of the school challenges are where it's located. I mean, wh wh however you feel about needing a school or not, that's another another thorn in a lot of people's side. And so when Karen and I were chatting earlier, we were just talking about, I think we have some opportunity for properties that um, will be a little less controversial. And to me, and this is just my opinion, that if we can't come into a piece of property, we're never going to get a community center passed. So, and, <laughs> you know, if I could hit the triple threat and if we could find a piece of property that we could build a community center get a sports field on and maybe do some conservation with acreage to meet the 30 by 30 that's sellable to a lot of people mm -hmm. and it hits a lot of goals and so when we've been kind of looking at properties in the background that's kind of either developers that need us properties that have sat for a long time and maybe the vision's changed but has that ability to kind of check two of those three boxes um and the other thing we talked about is it's never going to get cheaper either. So when's the right time? And it's never going to get cheaper. Um, and the difference in our process versus the school, and it's, it's it's the hand that the school has dealt. They have a certain amount of students, certain amount of teachers, certain amount of requirements. This ad hoc committee and the residents of Scarborough are going to be able to build what they want. And then decide, do they want to fund what they want? That's a whole other conversation than I have to have it. You know what I mean? Because but you've got the, so many kids. The thing that nobody said yet is that it also is going to be a revenue source. Right. So very different. Yeah. yeah. So it's completely different yeah. model, different things. So, and I, I it is different, but I will say after being on the council for a year, there is a lot of just, you're spending money on this. You're spending right. money on this and they won't differentiate between you just spent 7 million on land for here. And then you want how much for this land here. Yeah. And I think it's, that's are those the happened. loudest voices or are those the like because I feel like a lot of times it's it just would be loudest. great if the positive people right. showed up sometimes. I know. I know yeah um yeah I mean I've studied political science to the extent that I realize that they represent a certain group of people but I don't there's, think there's a chair right they there. are a minority yeah. um yeah interesting but I mean that's what the ballot's for really right. I think the school will be very oh. interesting <laughs> so do we have a schedule of dates for the ad hoc committee? Every so one of the requirements they asked was, we just set, we met Thursday, Thursdays were a challenge. And then we started talking about the discussion. We paused it. I sent it. Uh, yeah, well, okay. I sent That's it. where you lost I sent it. meeting. Yeah. I, yeah. yeah. So, so it's our next meeting is Monday. They just wanted to meet, do the homework and then set a date. So we sent a um, survey monkey out for people to be able to choose the day and the time of the week mm -hmm. and see so if we can get up. some sort of consensus. They did not 
Did you send that out? It's today. It went today. Oh, oh. yeah. Literally cool. two seconds. Yeah. I was like, can't do these. Yeah. Can't do these. <laughs> yeah. I probably sent it around. I got I got the agenda from Patrick around one, I think, and probably it was right after that it went out. I'll double check when I get offline here, but yeah. I know when, when that was on the ad box for like the now, public safety meeting, the uh, and yeah. no Wednesday schedule. morning, I think, every other week. Yeah. Sorry, no, what? no set schedule at all. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and so once that's there, and again, they'll be hybrid and open to the public. So and that's but, in chambers. Uh, we're going to try to keep it in chambers because then we can use the, you know, yeah. whether the camera or yeah. just better. Um, look at that. All right, great. That is that. We move on to item seven, CSAV master plan goal presentation um, recap. I don't think this should take 30 minutes. But, um, the meeting in front of town council, I thought went pretty well. Uh, most were able to attend, which is appreciated. Um, we basically just outlined what we had proposed at our <clears throat> last meeting, uh, meeting their uh, deadline. Questions from town council were, I don't want to trivialize it, but I thought minimal and understandable. Um, and got a good job, bad a boy, go for it. Um, I didn't see a lot of direction coming from them. <laughs> I felt, yeah, I felt what Anderson was saying, I, I yeah. apologize, sort of tired, long time ago, but I felt like at the end, Anderson was giving a little bit of direction. Yeah, I went through and watched it today during lunch, and um, the three things that John had chimed in at the end was, um, his questions were, are these in order of priority, and the answer mm -hmm. was no. Yeah. It was more of, yeah, if you had to take a vote, the community center, you know, was, was the biggest thing we talked about. Um, he was talking about, he sees the beach environment. And is probably the second priority in mm -hmm. our in our kind of list. Um, and then he on the three to five recommended that we consider um, moving the trail development connectivity because it's part of the transportation work into the zero to you know into the into a higher priority earlier in the session um, in your goal session. So, um, but when I watched, they all had good feedback. They understood the priorities. They said. It's a lot to undertake. And I think John's or somebody's words were if you could get through items one and three, you would have accomplished a lot. Mm -hmm. Sorry, what was the second one? Beach, uh, beach, uh, beach environment. environments was yeah. there his second priority and, and then the trail one? development would be three. Yep. And yeah. it, so there is a lot of movement with trail connectivity. So like the transportation committee is doing an event next Tuesday. Same right? time as the Alliance. Um and um in for people to stop in and talk about it's a big conversation but i think that's why anderson was saying we could move that up and yeah. see if there's anything that this board can contribute to that process and have, we, have they established i don't think they formed their official board and brought memberships from here yet have they karen for, for transportation because they, they with, with them maybe they're doing this open house kind of thing because they were supposed to be going to get somebody one or two from this committee to kind of be the, like we're doing with the ad hoc the liaison back to them. So I don't, I don't know if they did it. I don't think I I, I, have I know heard. they have a lot of conversations about it. I can check with um with Angel about that. The only other thing I highlighted and I think you had mentioned it, Karen, in your comments from as a counselor that night was um uh, the idea of forming the community liaisons to be able to get information to and then back to us. So, well and that's something I'm gonna try on Tuesday is yeah. myself at least trying to get Pine Point to yeah. create one. Yeah. So yeah. we're not going to these meetings. And, right. and I did mention that. that, I forgot, I did mention that during the Herd Park meeting is that, you know, when our meetings were, please come, you know, um, at some point, one of our goals was to have a community liaison. So if you wanted to talk about Pine Point, call Rick, because he lives down, you know what I mean? Like, in, or call, you know, that way it's, you have somebody directly to connect to and know that that's what they do with councils, right? They get they call their counselor, counselor brings us back to council, and now it's in the public record. And so I think that would be a great way. Um, and I think people appreciate you know, what you guys do and volunteer. So getting that information for you guys, you know, gives a little more priority, I think. So and a minor point, I can't remember which counselor said it, but somebody asked too about the aquatic programming. That's the three to five years out. They said 
well, wouldn't that be part of the community center programming? Yes. We basically said, well, yes. Yes. But mm -hmm. they didn't like the language we used. Right. But, no, but, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was more of a point in the statement of, but yes, yeah. there's a lot of things that kind of there tie are together. Overlap. Yep. And there was some pretty good discussion, or not discussion, but kind of just, I think, conversation regarding the um, the outdoor pavilion. You know what I mean? And I think that'll turn into a, more of a discussion for us as we start looking at operation efficiencies. Because your second goal was, well, one of your frontline goals was maintenance of current facilities. And so, you know, I think that's where, you know, some of the discussions you guys had in your two kind of power groups on, you know, was takes a lot of maintenance, takes a lot of work. Is that worth it? And so we're trying to do some things on our end to make it less work. Um, so, but yeah, no, I thought they, they liked the document and yeah. thought that they, um, those are the only changes I thought they recommended really. I mean, so. Anyone have any other questions? Want to add anything? I, th I think this would probably be part of our agenda for next meeting to which direction, what are we tackling? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And like I said, when we started forming this, you just let me know what you need from me or information. Or let's say, you know, when you're getting into this, you're going to start. I pulled the beach numbers out and have that information for you tonight and suggestions mm -hmm. from them. Because it was it was a goal, and also we're in the season, and then you can decide what you do or what more you need. But I just need a little lead time to say, hey, next meeting we want to talk about this, and then let me know what you want. I can bring you data or that sort of stuff to be able to make decisions um, ahead of time. So it's a productive meeting for you guys. It's probably good to revisit. I think that was one of the suggestions was to revisit this every year and. Prioritize or reprioritize. I was I reread it again today, and there was things on here that I didn't even. I mean, I remembered when I read it, but it was like, okay. So for me, I'm going to have this hanging on my because it's just stuff that we can be moving the needle in the background, you know. Right. Great. Thank you. Beach operations. Segway. Yeah. So <laughs> in your packet there, there's two documents. Um, one is just the financial wrap up and I'll go over that as well as another document says beach management suggestions which come from uh, Steve Kramer, my beach supervisor, you know, just waterfront manager, manager and that as well as um, uh, Dana and Gary Chapley are his two part-time leads at the beaches and they've been doing work in the beaches probably 10 years. And so the three of them sat down for an end of the year meeting and provided feedback for us. So these are just some of their thoughts, but. Um, I kind of wanted to go over the financial piece for you guys first, because I think that drives some of the decisions. So what you see in front of you is um, the first one is he did 20, 2022 and 2023 passes. Um, and so we've kind of talked a little bit here about fees and policies dictate how things operate. Um, so you can see this year, you know, we sold, you know, over 2,500 resident passes. Last year was 1,800 resident passes. Wow. You know, I correlate that to it was thirty dollars on weekends, so mm -hmm. more people bought season passes. Yeah. You know, and we also did a better job marketing this year, a little earlier, get your passes, blah, blah, blah. Um, everybody understands the resident extra passes. You for once you buy your regular season, you get as many as you want for five dollars. So you can see those numbers there. Not uh, pretty close, but within a hundred of each other. Uh, a big gain is um, in non-resident passes. I think that thirty dollars directly drove people. You know, we went from two sixty three to three sixteen in non-resident season passes at that number. Mm -hmm. um, the next data point there for you, and it's this is not scientific, and 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 but um, why we do it. But you can see these are the days that we didn't collect. The mm -hmm. meters might have collect, but we didn't have staff there collecting because. Every beach had a, let's say there was either one, two, or three people working that day, depending on which beach and what time of the year. There was always one staffer went and walked the, the walked the lot, checked everything, make sure the bathrooms were good. If the lot was busy, they would stay and work if it was raining. If it was not busy and they didn't feel like, you know, it was they, they went to the meter. And so you can see that Herd Park had the lowest days of no collection because rain or shine most days there was people dog walking out there you know it wasn't about sunbathing it was about different you know surf whatever it was um 
Higgins was a little less, and then Ferry uh, had the most collection days because it's kind of trend where Ferry's the family beach. And if it's raining and gross, you're not dragging your kids out to the beach. And so these kind of play to that. Mm -hmm. um, underneath that, for reference, is we broke out. Um, we changed to $30 on Saturdays for July and August. So you can see that that revenue amount there and how many um, passes we did. Um, there's not a lot to compare to because our first day doing it. Um, what you can compare it to is we would have had half the revenue if we charged 15. I mean, that's really what that tells you. Um, the number underneath it is not scientific. And um, at the beginning, it happened a lot more than it did at the end. But we asked our staff um, to, when people came up and said, hey, I'm going to a day pass, and they said $30, and they said, oh, it's 15, don't no, change it 30. Those are the amount of times that people left. And didn't even pay. And didn't even pay because they didn't want to pay 30 to stay. So that's revenue lost. But then when you look at, if you have that, we're kind of, you know, it's almost net neutral. So um, just another statistic to kind of look at. So Steve and Dan and Tappa came up with that because the first weekend, there was a ton of turnarounds. Mm -hmm. You know, they were just going to go for a walk and they didn't want to pay $30 to go for a walk. So uh, data points um, underneath, just so you know, when we talk about meters, this is how much each meter collected uh, at the meters. So people that either paid when we weren't there or when we were there and didn't have cash, they used their credit or debit. So that's how much money was collected by the meters. Um, and then on the back breaks out 2022 versus 2023. Um, and so we'll skip right down to kind of 2023 so you can see which the second half of that page. We have a pretty elaborate spreadsheet and they log it in every day with deposits from the three different beaches. And sometimes there's two or three deposits from each beach, depending on the shifts. But we keep track of how many passes we sold in the morning, how many we sold at 15. We had to add the new $30 in, which was just weekends in July and August, and then the PM time. So that tells you how many passes and how much revenue was generated from each park in each time frame throughout the summer. Um, so yeah, that's that's all the data. So ferry, ferry is that is, that's just weather related due to the good. Feather and ferry is weather related. Yeah. Usually it goes Higgins is I mean uh, Bird Park is usually double revenue, mm -hmm. yeah. and then it's ferry is usually second. Um, but because of the days lost with families, it was you know, and then and then Higgins is usually pretty steady around those numbers because rain or shine, the surface or dog walkers, and so those are those are pretty hardy groups. Um, the one thing that I wanted to explain to you, and it's 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 when we're looking at numbers, and so it, it didn't dawn on my first budget cycle, and I want to make sure you guys didn't understand. So if I don't explain it well, tell me. These, when we look at the beach, I look at the beach season from May 1st to we shut the beaches down September 5th or 6th, whatever it is. And so this number reflects with all the days we operate, days we're closed. When you look at our budget in our software, it never matches these numbers because we do our budget July 1st to June 30th, right in the middle of the summer. And so Steve came into me as a new manager this year and said, oh my God, I didn't make enough money. And he looked at the book <laughs> and it said 267. And I said, Steve, yes, our budget was $500,000. But you're going to see next April, May, June, all the season passes get sold. So you'll get that hundred and something revenue, plus the revenue of all the month of June, which this year was non-existent. Mm -hmm. So, so when we look at a season, because it's tough to say, oh, it rained in July and August, but you know we had a great, you know. So these numbers that I'm giving you are the beach season. When we look at budget stuff, it's July one to June, August. So we can have a great, we can like we sold a lot of passes this year but that was reflected in last year's budget mm -hmm. right that's money we don't have now but that's the whole season so when you look at cause and effect you kind of got to keep the data lines together so i just want to make sure i shared that with you so considering all the rain days and the miserable we were like we're not far off our numbers so i think the 30 dollars did help um i think that you help know, what revenue help or? revenue okay. a little bit but like 40 grand and it would again if we didn't have it with the days off, it would have been you know. Right. Um, I think that we had some. Mm -hmm. Steve's my first beach manager that probably worked more 
physically at a ticket booth than in his office because it rained for four days and then it'd be like everybody went to beach the next day mm -hmm. and so he was he'd call me at 8 30 in the morning like lots full i can't leave you know i'm waiting i'm just called in the third person i'm going to go to the next beach and so he did a fantastic job for a first year manager just juggling and learning the rules and dealing with customers and so um the overall staff did a really good job considering so i just wanted to share that with you because some of those points with the 30 and charges um and rain days um that'll be part of your conversation when we talk about meeting that beach environment goal moving forward um the suggestions that they gave on that next page, um, nothing super high level. And some of these are things we talked about, but again, those guys live down there and I explained to them, they think it really short soon. They wanna make as much money as they can because they think of it as theirs. Um, and so some of these suggestions, I have to kind of say to them, the advisory board will make a recommendation to council and then council makes the final changes on what fees cost, when hours, that sort of stuff. Um, I said, the one thing that we're talking about this fall is what do you want the beach to be? You know, is it res like you said, resident based dogs, times a day? When do you charge? When do you not charge? And so these guys gave their recommendation as how they see the beach could either make more money or function a little better. Um, so presently right now, I'll just recap, our hours are 5.30 to 8. We charge um, Five dollars, and then eight to three, we charge fifteen dollars, and then in that afternoon, three to six, we charge another five, which is kind of complicated. Mm -hmm. um, Say that again. <laughs> so it's it's five in the early morning, five in the evening, and then fifteen in the middle for conversation, just for mm -hmm. kind okay. of conversation interest. And this year, the fifteen turned into thirty on the weekends, right? Mm -hmm. So they gave a couple suggestions of raising the morning fee. The ten dollars again. I think that's what you guys had proposed a while mm -hmm. back. Mm -hmm. And there, and the reason why they said to me they they they're recommending that is because the number went to fifteen or thirty. At eight forty-five, there was the parking lots were pretty full because okay. people didn't want to pay that, so they were getting there earlier. Mm -hmm. And then the beaches that have specialty stuff, meaning Higgins is a surf beach or you know dog walking, that lot is full. When that attendant showed up at seven thirty to do his walk or her walk around the parking lot. Those lots are full, and those guys may not leave until the eleven o'clock rule, you know, that's going on. And so um, that was their suggestion to kind of, you know, get it because again, it's trash, it's bathrooms, it's showers, it's all that sort of stuff. Um, and we also saw positive numbers in people that when the fee went up, they bought season passes. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you're not changing the. Are they? I apologize. Are they proposing to change the hours or just the fees? So there's two different ones to consider there. And again, I said I would bring these to you, and you guys can hash out okay. whatever you want. And is this effective for the fall? Did you say, no, or for no. next season? No, there's nothing in effect. Right, right, right. But and is there a proposal for this? Their segment? proposal would be to next season. Next season. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So the goal is again, season, you yeah. guys work through everything. Yeah. You've got to go to council, multiple meetings, and then council blew it. And I really push hard to get it back from council by like February. Because one, I can include any revenue projections or expenses in my budget, and we play on that. And I need to advertise. You know, it's it's we got to change signs and and websites and everything else. So there's a before you start selling those passes in April, you need you need at least a solid month to to get everything squared away. So uh, do you feel like this board should be doing talking about fees this winter if you need? Yeah. Our directive by yeah. February. Well, yes, I yeah, think yeah, we no, should pull up that should be comparable beaches for the next around. Meeting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I think that I just want to share the data with their suggestions so you could process. But yeah, I mean, your number three goal was the beach environment. And I think that's a big one. The only hourly suggestion they changed, they talked about was um, to consider would be from 5.30 to 9, charge the $10. So you have a longer period of $10 there. Um, and then drop an hour off the back end. So you wouldn't charge till 6 o'clock. You'd only charge till 5 but make it $20 all the way through. So you would capture three, four, you'd capture those two hours as $20 hours versus going back down to a five. So yeah, I didn't put it to any numbers. Like if we made this change, I could take the spreadsheet and put any fee you want me to kind of work through in this kind of formula against this year's number to say, okay, this way, grab this much revenue, this way, grab 
this much revenue. Uh, I don't think we should go down after going, at least for Saturdays and Sundays, after going up to 30 and seeing how much more revenue we have. That's my immediate reaction to this. Yeah, and and and, and again, totally your choice. The only only thing I would ask to consider is we change 30 to every weekend and not started in July and August. Oh, yeah. 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 If yeah. we're going to do something like yeah. this, it was yeah. hard. We had to change the sign. Yes. 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 That's like, like a no-brainer. We were in the parking lot. So if you're going to stay with the 30 on the weekends, yeah. I would just say you make it for the entire yes. then, yeah. yeah, that was my understanding. Yeah. This was just an introductory. Yeah. And so this again, year. just recommendations, but those are the type of things where I will tell you those, so you know, the only challenge with the $30 was is we were carrying around a lot of and NOAA bills versus $5 bills. Yeah. So the amount mm -hmm. of money we had transporting was more mm -hmm. it's not i mean we have a pretty good we have one guy driving around i won't say everything online how what we do with it but we, we have a pretty secure system and then it goes to the police department but yeah. it's still more cash okay. you can you go non-cash no well the, so we could so we have the meters you know the only challenge with the meters is we have a lot of breakdowns because internet service down at the waterfront mm -hmm. is not fantastic no. do you use the meters you when you say meters do you mean at the like the individual meters or is there a meter when you drive into the parking lot when you drive car. into the parking lot you either hand them cash or you can punch your card and it gives you a little ticket receipt for your window and so the rules are pay the meter machine let's call it okay. the meter. Got yes. it. pay the machine can you not do an app down there then because the internet Everybody's going to app. Like I just came from USM, yeah. and they have a honk app. I don't know about the others, but service at Higgins is so horrific. There's no way okay. we dump the baby meter all the time. Yeah. All right. um, the other thing that's going to go down this, and I got to kind of get to. Uh, I can't think of the name of the chair of the waterfront committee at the moment. I think Darren going on because he's the one I talked to. But they're looking at parking options. Darren. Darren, good night. Thank you, Darren. You know that Darren. board is looking at parking options on some of the side streets in Pine Point and where people are parking in their parking lots. And so I know the co-op asked to have metered parking. So I think they're doing some work in the background, and I'm just going to reach out to them, like, hey, we're having the same conversation. Please make sure don't come with this great proposal and not talk about our 500 parking spaces that we manage because they need to be the same. Whatever mm -hmm. system we do in town should be. A blanket system. So, no, no cash. What's that? No cash. It's an option. For Williams. Yep. The internet service there sucks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you pay, that. it's all metered pays. Yeah. Payment there. Yeah. 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 No, it is an option to get away from that. So, and, and all of the beaches are manned from, you said 5 30? No, to... from, from 8. They show up at 7 30, do the parking lot walk, get the booth open, okay. and collect okay. at 8. So you de they're dependent on, and, and if they see that they don't have a pass on that, what do they do with the cars that are sitting there without paying in the morning? Well, they'll go make when they come out, they'll, they've kind of tagged which cars okay. come out. Right. So, so, and the officers, depending on how many Higgins are really good about, they go through the parking lot. Yeah. And they just get tickets. Yeah. You know, yeah. I will say though, personal pet peeve is we get no ticket revenue. So if you don't park at Higgins <laughs> and pay your 15, we community service doesn't get a dime of that ticket fee. Mm -hmm. My my pitch is gonna be let's raise the ticket fee and give me my feedback. Absolutely. So if it's forty dollars, make it fifty five. Absolutely give, happen, give me my fifteen right? back. Like, yeah. it's like yeah. that's not even a question that should happen. Right, but it doesn't. So that's that's yeah. something that That'll I'll need to kind of yeah. and they leave yeah. <laughs> at what time at night? Five? They leave, they leave either five or six, depending on how many people we have on board. I, I have uh, several times this summer. Yeah. I lived there. Yeah. yeah. And I wanted to go to uh, Brunswick to see the play. Yeah. And I was running late and I couldn't get out of Higgins. Yeah. Because the cars were lined up from the parking lot all the way to 77 and yeah. from this, from the parking lot all the way uh, to the, to the park. I mean, yeah. you could not get out. Yeah. And I finally called, and they got the, the police and everything. Yeah. And it was, you know, uh, the parking the uh, the parking enforcer was there, and the, the bike cop was there yeah. trying to figure out what to do. And they finally got involved. And that happened two or three times. So we we need to make uh, the talk about what. There's a lot of do. demand on the beaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah because that's a fine point. Probably yeah. two dozen times yeah. a year that it's backed have up. You and, for and again, this week had nothing to do with here, but mm -hmm. but the with, storm, with, with the storm, mm -hmm. my friend, oh yeah, that was a horror show. My mom had to show her license. And I finally, I in. finally wrote to the town manager. I want to let you know that town manager, the chief, and and assistant chief Grover, yeah. with six or seven pictures that I had 
take it. Yeah. And say, you know, for the safety of the neighborhood yeah. and the safety of the people coming in to see the show that's yeah. being put on by the waves and those yeah. surfers well, and the show, kids yeah. in the water where everything was said the day before, stay out of the water with the rip tides <laughs> and they're all out there. And I mean, the people don't care. And they're double parked. And I'll show you where they're double parked. And people leave their cars to go see what their cameras so take. The tickets aren't big enough. Well, and that's like right. a one. The problem every with ten years is that we have to remember. Oh, yeah, it's only right. one way in right. and one way out. Yeah. With side roads in between that right. people can't. Mm -hmm. Well, we kind of talked about this at the at the Heard Park meeting was, and I explained to the res the people that joined us that day is that Scarborough does not have a traffic enforcement division. And so a lot of these challenges, they're taking somebody physically that could be leaving Walmart dealing with a domestic or anything else and driving down. So when they, you know, there's only they're only running a limited staff. And so part of my narrative to them was everything we keep talking about either has to have a revenue source or it's an increased budget. Mm -hmm. Because they wanted me to bury all the power lines at Hurt Park under the under the ground. And I'm like, you're talking about a half a million dollar project. So you can put a turning lane in I'm like it just doesn't happen you know what i mean so but so yeah so i i the enforcement piece is the biggest one and that's where i i feel like i need to be an advocate for the police department to have more traffic enforcement going in the lots being yeah, on the roads absolutely. knowing that when there's a storm i can just say hey guys you're not giving tickets here you're going down to the beach today you know there's, we just don't have that we you know we'll and I'll get this committee will help me kind of finalize the draft language and the ad, but we've got money for a first part-time park ranger. Mm -hmm. What does that role turn into? You know what I mean? And what does that look yeah. like? You know what I mean? So that's a conversation we'll have to add to an agenda once we start. I've got Absolutely. floors and, and South Portland's and Kenny Buck's job description and that sort of stuff. But and then managing expectations, right? Because like you're not calling some part-time and leave hers at her bed at eight o'clock at night to come down and deal with. Like there's only 24 hours in the day. And so that ultimately falls back on the police department after hours when it's a full moon and the waves are ripping and people are just parking where they want to park. Do they have a cadet, yeah. they have a cadet program? They do. That who runs the yep. They usually they also do. have yeah. summer reserves. Those are the ones that are on their bikes, yeah. but they only work certain hours. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if, I mean, it's not, you don't, you don't need a full-time staff member necessarily. It's really the summer months that are the biggest Right. They, they need more of a budget for reserve officers to do it, yeah. like the way Old Orchard does. Seasonal, yeah. Yeah. Seasonal. Yeah. 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 They have some, but not enough. But yeah. we got to build up the park rangers, which might be a cheaper mm -hmm. number. I don't know. You oh, guys would, would know oh, more. Would yeah. But but you need a wider range. You know, like we have one person budgeted for next year. That person is going to be more about what's the program look like and what do we establish going forward. But and we put a reserve officer at Higgins Beach from six in the morning until nine at night that's that's a that's a budget that's only one beach that's not ferry and that's not so mm -hmm. you know there's the challenges but then it's the odd food and so yeah Bob, has your, i know I'm, I'm a fan of steve kramer yeah. he works really yeah. hard has any yeah. this is great that they did this feedback yep. so i just want to yeah, like, yeah. like i'm like yeah. great i'm glad that he's doing that and they got all this feedback yeah so and again those other scope we don't think i can give my time because i'm wasting your um Phil and RVs, they say whatever you set for the rate, make it three times. Yeah. yeah um, and yeah. we don't allow them at Higgins Beach. Yeah. So, because they just can't get yeah, in and out. <laughs> no. Uh, season passes, they think the fees are, and, you know, I said we may look at them to see what that, that non resident type pass looks like still. Um, they're a big advocate of uh, moving towards online payments, especially now that town hall has gone to four days. People that come for a long weekend, they got to pay the $30. And so if they could go online and get their season pass for 50, they, they already $90 into a season pass. So um, just kind of streamlining that sort of stuff. Uh, he would though propose just because he understands mailing, staff time. You, you want your pass mailed to you, it's an extra 10 bucks. Like recur the staff cost to, to deal with that processing. Um, and then we ran into this a few times this year, a little more this summer, but um, and I think this is something for this group to look into a little deeper, but um, we had a lot of conversation with people about their dogs mm -hmm. um, as service dogs, and some were better than others. You know, the telltale size when you get yelled at with somebody with a service dog vest is, you know, that dog is a service dog. 
Because when you ask him the question as a service dog, that's one of the three questions you can ask. And then is, what does that dog do for you? And when your answer is, I don't need to tell you, they don't know what the service dog rules are. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we've had to call the police before, but this year, as he said, we've had uh, cats on the beach on the niche. I mean, okay. it's, you know, it, so anyway, so he, he suggested we look into our signage and our rules that may say animals or something just to give our tenants a little more of that, you know, you're watching a cat dig in the beach and go in the bathroom. It's like, your science says dogs. Right. It doesn't say cats. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so you know. say animals. No, yeah. I mean, I don't even think domestic animals, just because then that's yeah. another argument. I think just animals. Yeah. <laughs> so I think those are things when you guys dive into kind of rules and policies, right? You're talking about fees, what does that drive towards, and then rules to shape up. I, I think we have a lot to kind of dig into to kind of shape up the beaches. And um, I was watching the video and I was, I wish I could have seen Trisha's face when she said, I'm probably going to get stapled to the cross. <laughs> yeah, I know. You know, it's the dog word, you know, and it's just, and again, I think hopefully we can have discussions and invite conversation back to this board to say, please tell us why or why not, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so that's the quick speech update. Again, proud of Steve and his team. Uh, hopefully we have a lot of people returning uh, for next summer because that makes it a lot easier. Um, so, yeah. So do we need to do homework for next session about fees at other places, or is that something we're going to dive into during the meeting? I think that's something we'll get for next meeting to yeah. dive into. I, I, the only thing I guess I would ask, and again, if it, it's something you're going to set on your agenda, I think that the homework that I would ask you to do is to come back next meeting. I can give you whatever you need. But really, what are the important issues? You know, when people say dogs, the issues... Just don't say dogs. Tell me what bothers you about that. And then is there a comparable solution that we can try to talk about? Because, you know, you deal with what we did. Oh, silo. Just tell me what you think. What's the solution to that? You want me to take the front 10 feet? You want, right? You know, like we need to come up with, so I think the homework would be is what really we want to see change in the beach. Is it dogs? Is it hours? Is it keys? Um, you know, we had a lot of conversation about trash cans. We talked about it at the herd. And they're like, oh, you know, we're always complaining about winter trash cans. I'm like, we empty the trash cans three times a week during winter. I can do it four and I can do it five. It's just a budgetary thing. Like, you know, or we can put more barrels out there. So we, we kind of flex and go. And yes, we get more complaints in the winter. We we'll run right down and empty the barrel, you know, but it's tough to know that in the winter, it's going to be 60 mm-hmm. on a sunny day. And now, you know, we don't empty the barrels till Monday. So they sit there Saturday, Sunday. And so, um, we always try to please, but there's certain things that we have to kind of decide. And forty parties is another one. We get them clean twice a week, you know, and see they're put more or clean them more often, or don't have them. But that's when people just go to the bathroom. That's what somebody said. Just get rid of them. Like, they'll just go on the side of the building. <laughs> so yeah, right, you know. So those are things that I think that again for you guys to think about what's important, then you guys can kind of have those discussions. Oh, I, I don't. I don't mean to. Interrupt, no, but... please. Yeah. I had, uh, first of all, my comment about the changing of the pricing schedule is to try to keep it simple. Just if you're going to do pricing, just don't worry about the five to six o'clock. Just make it simple for the signage, for the employees, for the people that come. Mm -hmm. Then the second thing is I'm curious about the driveways, the turnarounds. Yeah. Do you have any anecdotal characterization of? why they did that, who they did it, and when they did it. If it's because the lot was full, which happened a few times, yeah. well, you know, has to be rationed somehow, and pricing yeah. is a way that that functionality takes place. But it's if it's because it's a budget issue, it's 539 cars that turned around and went away, and that's 539 families that didn't go to the beach that day or had to find some other way to get there. And I'm honestly a little troubled by that. So I'd like to know if it's because the beach was so busy, they couldn't get in or didn't want to stand in line. They were going to find an alternative, go to a private parking place someplace. That's great because we only have limited spaces, but if it's because the $30 stopped them, you know, take some. So I can ask Steve to survey his staff a little deeper. When I asked Steve the same question, the two answers that I got from him was one, most of these happen early in the season. Early July, didn't know about it. And then that's why he made the Friday recommendation too, because you show up on a Friday to, you know, you start your cottage rentals or whatever you're doing on a Friday. And so if you can't get here early, you don't have your pass. And so 
a lot of those like, oh, I'm not going to. They weren't expecting it. And the other ones, the answer they got was, I'm only coming for a couple hours. <laughs> you know what I mean? So 30 just becomes a not of value anymore versus if I'm showing up at nine o'clock and I'm paying 30, I'm going to be there the whole day. You can't even go to McDonald's for $30. So um, that's, those are the two big things was the timing of it. Couldn't, couldn't get my pass. You know what I mean? And we don't anymore because it, it stopped, which I get why they did it, but we don't allow you to bring your seats in and get $60 off your $150 non-resident pass. It was just too lanky. They they did that for a few years, I guess. It, um, it was new too. Well, yeah, and we did that when we did it late in the game. Yeah. We yeah. did it late yeah. in the game. We were changing signs the week of, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Because it came in the budget process. It was, you know, there was a lot of barriers, I think. But Steve said, you know, as they get going, because we put managers down at beaches so the kids didn't get yelled at. You know, Steve went down and sat at the park for the first three weekends just to make sure that the kids didn't take it. So, um, so that was the big one, and it was just, I'm only going to be here for a little while. So, but I could dig down a little deeper with Steve and have him survey his staff a bit more. And I, I was actually going to, to ask as well. So, this is my complete ignorance. Yeah. But my parents live at Higgins, and I park in their driveway. So, yeah. I don't, that's yeah. the only place I typically ever go. My son uh, had to go to a birthday party at Ferry Beach. Yep. Yeah. I had never been there before, yeah. and I pulled in and in my head, beaches are free, right? Yeah. I, clearly that's wrong. But, yeah. you know, in my head, it yeah. always is. And I was told I had to pay $30. And I almost turned around and said he wasn't going to the birthday party because yeah. I was going to be there for like an hour and a half and I had heart failure that I was going to be yeah. bought a birthday present and yeah. was going to be paying $30 to do this. Yeah. Uh, I didn't. I yeah. paid it. And I just, you know, yeah. thought bad things in my head about, you yeah. know, about it. But for people that are just going for a couple hours for an outing and then going about third day I, I I think it's something to talk about and yes. I, I agree these numbers are kind of high I think from a revenue perspective because it was thirty dollars we made up the difference of yeah. you know from where yeah. it was but did those families come back well, you know what I mean did they go get season passes or did they well, say I'm not going to the beach in Scarborough that's too expensive and we I don't think know all of the above and I think yeah. when we talk about the environment we want the beach to feel like and I think if you asked a lot of people, I think that more people went and got season passes mm-hmm. once they figured it out. Sure. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? And that's what, like my heard park comment. Most of the people there to complain about the park weren't there to complain about the park. They were to complain about everything else because yeah. they're not even parking in the park. And they're walking <laughs> to it. So that's a right. whole nother yeah. conversation that's yeah. going on. I thought the whole point of, of raising the $30 was to steer non-residents away so that we would have the availability for residents who had the season pass to be I think that's a cause and effect right I think John was thinking more revenue and to balance that people would either buy season passes or provide more you know I'm sorry you had to do that no it's it's just an example what I was going to say is that I asked them not to make choices like they got to be kind of black and white no and and they the people there they said yeah we're really sorry it's 30 dollars and they had to help me use the credit card machine it was a whole thing but I guess my thought process was next year, if someone's having going to have even two birthday parties at Ferry yes. Beach, I'm getting a season pass because, well, you and, know, and, and but, I think that's what we kind of got to, you know, for $40, you go get your season pass. But I think with. maybe have the people um, educate about a response if someone freaks out about that. Yeah, yeah. Say it is $30. I, I do understand that's a lot, but hey, did you, if you're a Scarborough resident, did you know you could go do this? Well, I, Nobody said that to me. And I think and that's why one of these things is that, you know, if somebody pulled up and like, I'm not paying $30, I'm a resident. If you could go right online, right this mm-hmm. second, slide your credit card and buy a pass. I was just going to say, I think. Done. Mm-hmm. On in, yeah. Mail your sticker, just show us this when you come yeah. in. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. Sort so, of like museums. If you pay an entrance yes. fee, it then can be applied so yeah, to your idea. membership. No, that's a good idea. So that's yeah. kind of a tie. If you could do them online right there anywhere, then then you, you probably get a lot of people that. Yeah. Just, but it goes back to the online. If you could do it online at the beach, I'd go with an app. Yeah. Right. And yeah. you can put in how many hours you're going to be there. So for the person who needs to just come in for an hour, <laughs> yeah. then you just yeah. put it in for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. We need, I know that and my brain doesn't work this way. I wish, you know, we can do some research with other people that have changed to the hourly apps or what it looks like. You know, um, my thing is is that what type of enforcement does it take? Yeah. To manage an yeah. hourly app versus yeah. just hey, all right, your family's yeah. gone in and paid their thirty dollars. We got a sticker. Yeah. Like, do we? Do I have to hire different types of staff to right. be able to go? 
yeah. like tickets. And yeah. so I think those no, are just choices we got to mm -hmm. consider. Yeah, sure. I'm not saying it's not the right way to go, but we got to look but at the But to buy, like in your case, right. you've already paid $30 yeah. for $10 yeah. more to yes. get the pass. And right. that entitles Instead you to like back to the family. Telling everybody, I know that I'm only going to summer. Summer. I can take my kids in the summer I want to go. One thing they also talk more, it's kind of to Roger's point, it happens at Pine Point, but having those bodies there, and I think we can do a better job next year of, hey, when the lot's full, where do where do lot full signs go and be able to have people? Yeah. And then who do we notify? Like we were talking about protocols, like call the police number and let dispatch know, hey, lots are full, going to start backing up. You know what it is. Yeah. So, I wish there was somewhere online we could go to say, like, yeah. don't go to Higgins, the lot's full. Don't go to Ferry. Well, some of them, I'm sure they're all full when you when, I mean, o'clock. you're going to have a hard time. By the time you get from Higgins to to uh, Pine Point, you'll be full. Well, yeah. That's but a you're right. It would be good to like, like oh, I think I want to take my kids to the beach. Yeah. Just and change for that yeah. camera. The Higgins Beach camera is. Have it tilted towards the yeah. parking lot. You can see the sun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So again, open to all those things. And I think that's kind of the conversation we need to start having. Because then we can vet those ideas. Yeah. And then mm -hmm. try to get some data. Passport. You guys are good passport. Hmm. Yeah, we, I, we, is that's what the headline right? news yeah. is too, is, yeah. right? Yeah, we we started talking about passport, and then the beach season happened. And that's why it needs to happen now, because mm -hmm. then right. does the software match up with the machines we have? Oh, well, and do you have signal? Yeah, ultimately, because yeah. I had that issue at um at Portland Headlight going to like a cross country meet and trying to pay, and there wasn't signal, and so I. And I didn't know what to do then. Yeah. And I don't know about other beaches, but Higgins is horrific with signals. So it, it's a fantastic idea and I think it would be very well used, but then somebody needs to have towers put places to, can, to have signal. We might, be able, we might be able to boost light poles there in the area, but yeah, we could talk about Wi Fi maybe. The process. <laughs> yeah, there's another expense, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. so, so, anywho, that's that's the quick update that Steve put together for you guys just to kind of have great. the kind of highlights yeah. of what's going on and happened. And so, thank you, Yeah, yes. I thought he was doing, I didn't realize he was beach. I thought he was doing still does the sports, yeah, because he's right? doing, yeah, so he's he's wreck waterfront, wreck and waterfront. So, in the in the wow. summer, we don't do a lot of we do camps that we contract. So in the summer, his role is to do the beach parking lots, and then, like he's back doing soccer now and yeah. planning trips and team stuff, and so it just fills his twelve months wow. better. He does great work. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. Great. So thank you. Awesome. All right. Next, M nine firm dates. We've got a meeting scheduled for the sixteenth. Agenda items that I have right now are the beach fees. Um, discussion on the recommendations that we presented from town council and where we go forward with those and nominations. Nominations from for I'm having a board brain. chair, committee chair. Oh, when do we do those? Beginning of the year. Oh, okay. Okay, you wow. You'll have a new member in November, Patricia Kafka. Oh, I um, did get that, yes. And so this will be approved at the October meeting. And then she, I imagine she'll be here in November. Great. Awesome. So at our next meeting, we have to put people up to vote for committees. You just said that, but I'm reiterating because I wasn't. <laughs> so we're going to have to. Chair, vice chair, okay. secretary. And when did the, when did the terms what are the dates? Uh, I'd have to go. Uh, all I'd have to go online on our ad hoc page. It shows what those are. All right, I'm I zooming right off, on. so I don't want to. Yeah, no, that's fine. Mm -hmm. I was just yeah. curious. Yeah. I think it's the third third day every other month. So if we're meeting in November, then we would meet again in January, yeah. March. And again, you guys have decided if there's work in between. That's your prerogative. We just have to post it for public notice. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I just, we had gone to an every other month. Yeah, that's fine. Um, but I mean, terms, like, I think I will off soon. Yep. So let's see. Patricia. In 2003, Emily, Patricia, and, and Amanda. 23. Yeah. 2003. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you, so all you would do is you'll get an email from the clerk saying, do you want to renew? And you just say yes. January 1. Yeah. Well, you'll get it prior to that. Yeah. Um, and that was a question I had. I feel like someone emailed me on this one, the second alternate, and it was. Um, 2023, but am I, 
does that automatically push me to first alternate because our first alternate spot is vacant? Sure. Yeah. And so sure. what I'm, yeah. I'm looking at, I don't is, care. I'm just having no idea. In this meeting, I, 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 I think you already are the first alternate. I think that happened already. Yeah. Already. Did I? Yeah. Do so I have to read? Chain, no. I think you're no. fine. <laughs> That's um, even though you're talking about just for people to the, for staying on the committee, I think what I was talking about is the. The leadership. Chair, yeah. Chair. Yes. Yeah. 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 So yeah. two different things. Yeah. Okay. Like right. Yeah. <clears throat> Goes fast. Mm -hmm. Good. Anyone have any other items for agenda or otherwise? I think both of those would be allocated about a half an hour, 45 minutes. Oh, yes. Absolutely. Takes up the whole meeting. So Absolutely. No. <laughs> yeah. The only other thing that, and I don't know if we can squeeze in five minutes, but I think it'd be good for Alex and Amanda to give ad hoc committee updates. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. On yeah. the agenda. Uh, just absolutely. kind of yeah. mm -hmm. keep yeah. you guys in the loop because I think there's going to be, you know, conversation that we'll have to cut out agenda time to make the, the if we stay on this timeline to make yeah. it work and then use your resources to kind of support them and that work for the other committee. So one thing that came to my mind through tonight's meeting, talking about all the different town group um organizations um the pine point association and so on maybe we could try to organize sometime next year a special meeting just to invite them here i mean yeah. i know you said you've been yeah. doing yeah. this no i think kind of like the all boards meeting i think it's a great idea uh yeah, just awesome idea. you know to say hey let's do it yeah, we could have some refreshments, maybe. Yeah. You know, uh, oh, we like just, snacks. <clears throat> well, just, to just a thought. You know, put a face to a a, a name, name, a body, organization. Um, well, to think... let them know we're here. Mm -hmm. Use us as a resource. You, uh, Todd, said at the meeting he had at Higgins Beach talking about carry and carry out, yeah. which works. Uh, they're down to four barrels, hopefully two barrels for the winter, and, yeah. but or less. But he said something that I think would be a, a good idea is to appoint somebody from this committee to be the committee liaison, yeah, a liaison, liaison for Higgins and Pine Point, right. so that instead of calling Todd, he'd be calling the liaison to the places. Especially for what we've had at the beach. I mean, I, I I didn't realize how bad it was, but if I was liaison, I think I would have called the the police to, and then they barricaded it finally around two o'clock in the afternoon. Nobody going in, just residents. And I I would call them the night before. What are we going to do when you have another uh, hurricane coming? Let's put the gates there in the morning and just let so many people in at a time. Yep. When you see three cars go out, put three cars in, but they'll probably just go somewhere else. And the thing we got to remember with Higgins, it's the only place where you can drive a car and just to the, the ocean. You can't see that on any other beach. Yeah. And so people go there from all over the place, and they don't care once they come in what they're doing. They don't care. So I think that's part of, you know, it was on your goal sheet about figuring out how, what areas, of, you know, do we assign and just, you know, and then... Maybe we go to them. Maybe yeah. it's like, hey, we've got somebody that's representing Pine Point, and when they have their alliance meeting, somebody goes and say, hey, I'm from the advisory board. I'm the liaison. Here's my contact. You know, blah, 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 blah. The thing I always want to protect you guys from is that I'm okay taking the hard conversations, right? Like, you should be a good sounding board as a resource for them. And, hey, mm -hmm. thank you for doing this, Art. Right. If they're mad, <laughs> they come to me. You know what I mean? Because that's what I, I get paid to do. And that's oh, always yeah. my literal liaisons because you're not you're not involved in everything. There's so many aspects of our division and our department. And so it's 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 tough to be on top of everything. And so yeah, that's my only caution when we do. I think it's a great idea. I love the in and out conversation, but just how do we make sure that you guys are some people feel like they can say whatever they want when they want. So mm -hmm. um yeah. we can have that discussion how to handle that. But that's always my fear for that type of thing. But well, thank you for willing to be that. <laughs> no, I'm, I tell my staff I'm okay having that conversation. So. All right. Uh, thank you, Todd. Um, so as far as meetings going forward, do we want to try to schedule the every other month? So it would be November, January, March, May. 
stick with the every other month for right now. I'm like, add add as as, we, as, we as did, needed yeah. and like the well we kind of threw that July one in and fortunately we didn't have to have it so um, try yeah. to avoid the summer. <laughs> Emily, could you stick those dates in the minute? That's what I'm doing. Perfect. Yeah. Because then I, once it's official approved, we can give it to Tody and get the up, website updated because people. Yeah. Right. You it's do have the exact. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm get I'm getting the dates okay. now, but I was I was gonna ask if we could possibly switch to the second Thursday of the month instead of the third. Or did that like screw everybody up? The second of the month? Mm -hmm. Instead second of the third. Thursday. And bought me and retired. I can't be here on November 9th, but if I'm the only person to I'm, go for it, I'm also we'll be not starting here in 2024. With but... starting in 2024. Oh, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. So starting in January. With this much notice, I'm sure that would be. Okay. okay. Is the that? school board the second Thursday? That's, yeah, the school's on a different calendar. Not that it affects you guys, but just that's the only one I could think of that had a regular standing Thursday. Mm -hmm. um, before you join us, if you guys haven't gone to see the ramp down at Hurt Park, it's nice. Oh, yeah. it's nice. Yeah, it's, I've seen it. It's yeah. a really good product. Is we we do have um, one by twos, dark brown um, that are going to get bolted along the sides, mm -hmm. kind of a rub rail, so people don't come off it. Uh, we did have to go back down in the storm and address the the beach side ramp, but it held well. So um, happy with the product so far. Great. I'm not opposed to second Thursday. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have? Thank you. You said starting twenty twenty. Starting twenty twenty four. So be January. Yes. Um, I would only reach out to our new person to be approved to see what her availability. Mm -hmm. Don't want to. I think she's just gonna have to go with Lowe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds <laughs> great. Yeah. <laughs> she may not open. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. She probably doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, doesn't. All right. So we doing that. All right. Thank That's, you. So November is the third one, and then January starts. Yes. The second. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. It also helps avoid some of the school vacations. Yeah. It works out well. Yeah. 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 That being said, I'll adjourn the meeting. Thanks for yeah. attending. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. Let me just Online. end the recording so I can. Alex had to help me. In wow. Ten minutes. Uh, <laughs> laptop laptop was something cool. It's a thought that counts. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs>